Hello and welcome one and all. Today we are going to cover a new data integration tool called Airbyte. Airbyte is an open source data integration platform that enable users to quickly and easily move data between cloud and on-premise applications. It is designed to make it easy for developers to build data pipelines to transfer data from one platform to another. With Airbyte, users can easily create and manage data pipelines, automate data synchronization, and monitor data flows. Airbyte is built on top of a powerful data pipeline engine, which enable users to easily create and manage data pipelines. It provides a wide range of connectors, which can be used to connect to any data source, including databases, SaaS application, cloud storage, and many more. Airbyte also provides an intuitive user interface, which makes it easy to configure and monitor data pipelines. Airbyte also has an automated scheduler, which can be used to schedule periodic data synchronization. This means we can easily set up data pipelines, which will automatically transfer data from one platform to another at a regular interval. This makes it much easier to keep data up to date across multiple platforms. Let's see how we can deploy this tool and start building data pipelines. We will deploy the open source flavor on our local machine. They have a Git repository and we can clone this locally. Make sure you have Git installed on your PC prior to cloning it. In addition, we are utilizing Docker Compose. So make sure you have Docker Desktop installed on your machine as well. I have Docker Desktop up and running. I do not have any containers at the moment, but that's about to change. So let's go ahead and copy the git clone command, create a new folder. I have a new folder called Airbyte. We will launch command prompt from this location. I'll go ahead and paste in the git clone command and press enter. This will clone the Airbyte repository. It is a big repository, so it'll take some time to clone. Once this part is complete, we can change directory into the Airbyte folder. And from this directory, we will invoke docker compose up command. If you look back onto the Airbyte site, we can see that by default, it runs on port 8000. And we have a default username called Airbyte. And the password is simply password. We can change the default credentials. They are located in the env file. We can locate the username and password and change them to our liking. We have cloned the repository. We can look inside the Airbyte directory and see the various folders and files. There's a lot of stuff in here. All right, so let's change the directory to the Airbyte folder. And from this directory, we are going to invoke docker-compose up command. This will create the Docker containers for the Airbyte app. And once the Airbyte is up, we'll see the Airbyte logo and we'll see the local host and the port. Our Airbyte app is up. We can navigate to localhost port 8000 to access this application. Our Airbyte app is up and running. We can go ahead and log in with the default credentials. In this app, we need to create a source and a destination. So we'll move data from a source to destination, and then we'll connect the source to destination. Let's go ahead and set up a source. We will try and recreate the ETL pipeline we will extract data from SQL Server and load it to Postgres database. We can search for a source type. And in this case, let's search for SQL Server and let's go ahead and select it. We have few required connection details on this form that we will need to fill out. For hosts, we will provide the IP address of the host machine. Remember, our app is running in a Docker container. So we will provide the host IP address so it can locate the database running on the host. To locate the IP, we can run ipconfig command in the command prompt, and this will list the IPv4 address. Let's paste this under host. Default port for SQL Server is 1433. Our database name is AdventureWorks DW 2019. And it has picked the default schema, which is DBO. And we will use the credentials from the ETL series. JDBC URL is optional, so we'll leave that alone. If you're using SSL, then be sure to choose appropriate selection for SSL. The important option here is the replication method. This is explained on the right-hand side. We have full and incremental refresh 
as well as change data capture. For now, we are going to go with standard option, but we have CDC option uh, available to us. I believe we need CDC enabled on the database side for this option to work. Let's go ahead and set up this source. If all the connection details are correct, our source will be created. Okay, Airbyte is telling us that it's empty and we need a destination. So let's go ahead and create a destination where we will persist this data. Our destination is Postgres, so let's search for Postgres. Similar process, we'll need to fill out the connection details for the destination. We will provide the IP address for the server. Default port is 5432. Our database name is AdventureWorks, and we will use the public schema. We have the same credentials as the source, so ETL user and demo pass for password. We will leave the rest of the options alone. On the right hand side, we have summary of the required parameters for the connection. We need a Postgres user with permissions on the database. In the ETL series, we have created the ETL user and we have provided enough permission to this user on AdventureWorks database. Let's go ahead and set up the destination. We are connected to our destination database. We have set up the source and the destination. Now we need to connect these two. This is our destination database on Postgres. We are going to populate the public schema in this. At the moment, we do not have any tables, but that's about to change. In the Airbyte app, let's create a connection. The source is SQL Server, or we can set up a new source by searching for the source type. But let's go ahead and use the existing source we already set up. Our source is set up. Let's go ahead and uh, choose destination Postgres and we'll click the use existing destination button. It has mapped our source to destination. We can give it a meaningful name. I'll call it SQL Server to Postgres. We can set the transfer frequency as per our needs. This is for scheduling. For now, I'll set it to manual for testing purpose. Next, we have destination namespace. By default, it is going to mirror the source. It is going to copy the source system structure to the destination. For example, in the source we have DBO schema and AdventureWorks DW build table. This pipeline will create a DBO schema on the destination and in this schema it will create AdventureWorks DW build table. This is completely fine if you want to carry the source structure. However, we want to create these tables under public schema. So for that, we will select the custom format. In the custom format, we will provide the schema name, which is public. And also, if we want to prefix our tables, then we can provide a string here. Let's say we want to identify these tables with a prefix src underscore. So I'll go ahead and type that in. Our updates have taken effect on the destination. Table names are updated per our custom settings as well as the schema. Also, we can customize the table. If we don't want to pull data from all the tables, we can toggle the slider to left to disable the sync for certain tables. I will go ahead and toggle the slider for most of these tables. I only want to sync few tables. So I'll pick the tables I want to sync on the destination database. There are two options to persist data on the destination side, raw JSON or tabular data. I would advise for the tabular data, otherwise we need to perform further transformations to get the data in a table format. Our source and destinations are connected. Let's set up this connection. I will bring up the database and the Airbyte app side by side before executing the data pipeline. This is our destination database. We do not have any tables in it. Let's go ahead and trigger the sync in the Airbyte app. Our sync is running. And if we were to refresh the database, we see the internal Airbyte tables in the database. These tables are fixed with underscore underscore Airbyte and our sync is complete. We have moved 64 megabyte of data in 27 seconds. And the beauty of it, there's no coding involved. We see our actual tables with SRC prefix. We can use this table for staging, or we can build our dims and fact based on these tables. Let's query a table to view the data in it. This is the actual data. We see that there are a few Airbyte generated columns in it. We have the ID, emitted and normalized date. 
Let's query the raw table and see its data format. This contains the same data, but in raw JSON format. It does have Airbyte ID and date. In the Airbyte application, we can review the logs if we expand the sync. It stores all sorts of detail. If there are any errors, they'll be logged here. So we can check for errors in the log. And if you have worked with dbt, then the table or the model build look very similar to dbt. And perhaps under the hood, it is using dbt to create tables. All right, next we'll look at the replication. Here we can change the frequency to run on schedule. We can also change the format setting, but most importantly, we can change the sync mode from full refresh to incremental load. We'll cover this in a later video. The transformation contains the option for raw JSON or tabular data. It also has the option for custom transformation. If we click on it, we see that we can use dbt or data build tool to perform transformation on the data we sync. We can provide the dbt repo and the branch name. We will cover dbt in the future and perhaps plug dbt into Airbyte to complete the full ETL lifecycle. dbt is another open source tool and it only focuses on T transformation in the ETL. Since the advent of dbt, we have seen a lot of new tools that focus on extract and load only. For example, Fivetran, Airbyte, and dbt takes care of the transformation. You might have heard of the term modern data platform or modern data stack. If you build a data analytics platform with these new tools, such as Airbyte, dbt, Snowflake, or any other cloud-based database, then the stack is referred to modern data stack. We have covered AWS Redshift in this series here, and we are covering an EL tool, Airbyte. In the future videos, we will cover dbt to give you full exposure to modern data stack. This is all on Airbyte for now. I hope you enjoyed the session. Like, share, and subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.